Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the program. Uh, today we're going to look at Spain, specifically the southern tip of Spain, right at Gibraltar. There has been pretty recent discovery back in 2020 of these footprints at this uh, beach called El Asperillo, which is a site known for its hominin uh, fossilized footprints. And they recently came back with this uh, uh, dating, which we'll get into in a little bit, called OSL Optic optically stimulated luminescence. The number that they found was it was about 300,000 years old, which throws a monkey wrench in an already evolving picture of what exactly the populations were like back in the middle Pleistocene. It's about 300,000, 380,000 years ago in which all these footprints, about 300 footprints were analyzed and dated to. And uh, when they initially made the discoveries, they thought they were about 100,000 years old, which, um, according to this new dating, is they were initially incorrect, essentially. So uh, let's take a look at some of these graphics first. So the, the site is located in the Matalascañas area uh, near Huelva, which, again, here's, the, here's Gibraltar here. You can see it in relation to uh, uh, the African continent right here. And it's right next to this national park called Doñana. And they would normally attribute this to Neanderthals. But the problem is they haven't found any other footprints this old in this area. The scientists don't really want to uh, go out too far on a limb and say it was Neanderthals. So they're saying it's like a pre-Neanderthal ancestor within the lineage. Here's another... Uh, graphic here on the right you can see the um the different types of uh geography on this map here that you're dealing with so you can see the cliffs the yellow or active dunes and you have your inactive dunes over here and then you have uh the gray color the marshlands essentially and again anytime you have uh mud like this or moisture in the ground that's the best time to <laughs> make footprints that last for centuries this here, this graphic on the left, is this uh, basically an aerial view of the what's called the sand or silty matrix. And so the blue is the fine sand, and this is a, a medium sand. And all these black dots here, these little black pecks, are uh, little footprints that they found. And here's the drone footage, the drone photos here, which is essentially uh, this graphic here, but uh, with drone footage. And then these are, of course, uh, f some examples of the footprints themselves. So as you guys can see, that's pretty undeniable, right? Like these are definitely uh, some type of hominin, especially this one. If you look at I in the bottom right here, that's, uh, that's pretty obvious. The technique they used to get to that number, 300,000, was uh, by a process called optically stimulated luminescence that I mentioned earlier, which is a method for measuring doses from ionizing radiation to determine how long ago mineral grains were last exposed to sunlight or sufficient heating. Like I said before, pre quote pre Neanderthals were living in the Do Doñana area during this time, the Middle Pleistocene, which was a shock to a lot of people. Well, it it shouldn't really be shocking, right? Because stuff is getting older all the time. But anyway, um, this area, like I said before, was known for its abundance of hominin fossils. Of the 300 prints that I mentioned earlier, a uh, closer analysis revealed that they were created during a transition period between different climate uh, stages. So there's uh, the warm period, MIS-9, which is about 360,000 years ago, and then the glacial period, MIS-8, which is between 300,000 to 240,000 years ago. So you, So they're right at this transition period. And it makes sense that they'd be walking and, and migrating between uh, what could be continents, right? Because they're right there. Um, the sea level was 60 uh, meters lower. So that land bridge would have been much, much uh, uh, more apparent. And also the coastal plain would have been much larger. So you would have a wider surface area to make these prints on. Um, no other hominin footprints are known in this period except in the two Italian sites, Terra Amata and Rocca Monfina, which are about 380,000 years ago. 
so they're a little bit older but right in the uh still in the middle pleistocene um they're not sure exactly why uh they're not sure if they beyond belong to neanderthals like i said before um especially when compared to neanderthal footprints in france the lengths and sizes of the footprints pretty much are the same they, they vary between 14 to 29 centimeters so still the working hypothesis is that they belong to a group within the neanderthal lineage with that they just call pre-neanderthal hominins so for lack of a better term essentially this and this again this is a hypothetical group because these are just footprints there's no uh bones or anything like that to give us more info um also among the footprints that they found were megafaunal footprints su uh, such as straight tusked elephants boars and bulls aurochs um, and these animals again inhabited the area around 300,000 years ago and so again that flies in the face of the initial reports of about a hundred thousand years because you know that's a difference of 200,000 years there were completely different animals living in the area uh, 200,000 years later so Again, we have this instance of uh, humans coexisting uh, and sharing the same area as these giant animals. Um, so again, it'd be interesting to see uh, the tools that they were using and um, the, uh, what kind of shelters they were building and stuff like that. But this is without a doubt um, uh, hu our human ancestors. So uh, anyway, that's all I have. Um, let me know what you guys think. I'll, I'll have a link to the... Um, scientific uh, journal uh, in the link as well as uh, phys.org uh, publication and I'll talk to you guys later